You're listening to DraftKings Network. Today's episode is powered by Venmo and PayPal. Look, no matter how your favorite team did this season, there's still one way to feel like a winner, and that's with Venmo and PayPal. That's because you can choose to use Venmo or PayPal to add money to DraftKings in a few taps. You can even transfer your balance if you have one. So the next time you get paid back for dinner, drinks, or tickets to the game, you've got the option to put the money right back into your DraftKings account. Hundreds of millions of people use Venmo and PayPal already, and there's never been a better time to join them. Don't have a Venmo or PayPal account yet? Don't sweat it. Choose your way to pay and download the app to get started. Venmo and PayPal are not valid deposit withdrawal methods in Connecticut or Ontario. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Fargo, the new virtual assistant from Wells Fargo, makes banking faster and easier. Like this. Fargo, what's my checking account routing number? And this. Fargo, uh, turn off my debit card. And this. Fargo, what did I spend on groceries last month? And that's just the beginning. Do you, Fargo? You can in the Wells Fargo mobile app. Learn more at wellsfargo.com slash getfargo. Terms and conditions apply. Your mobile carrier's availability and message and data rates may apply. Wells Fargo Bank and a member of DIC. This is the Dan Levatar Show with the Stugatz Podcast. I don't know if I have this look right, because Chris Cody, I would say, is generally the most positive or the most generally consistently affable among us. You don't see Chris Cody having a whole lot of bad mood days. He's fairly consistent over the years, temperature wise. But I see, I think, I think, I've known you since childhood, what looks like a sadness in your eyes. That you don't look, you don't look exactly right to me. You look a little despondent compared to where your mood generally is. Yeah, it's been harder to get out of bed in recent weeks. And I didn't know why until it hit me. Football's gone. And I have a post-football sadness. And I think we all have it. Maybe you haven't acknowledged it yet. I can see you have it, Tony. Just it's by something at that you. men don't talk about. Right. They're, they're not comfortable talking about the fact that their mood has been altered by the secret private depression they have. And I've thought, I thought, I, and I came up with something. I was like, it can be anyone who's struggling like me right now. We can all do this. Let's all make a goal. I'm gonna do. Let's all set out to do something. Maybe improve something in your life. Eat a little better. Uh, spend more time with your family. And let's try to cre- let's cut- try to complete this goal by the start of football season. It's been like 190 some odd days until football season. So it's so. all like right no, now. No, 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 it's roughly 40. Not that I'm counting. That's spring football is back, baby. <laughs> the UFL. It took the two biggest spring football leagues and combined them. And AJ McCarron decided to come back to the Battle Hawks. But right real before. football is what we're talking. That about is real here. football. It's real good football. <laughs> Let's talk about this for a second. Both your sadness and Mike Ryan. I heard that he uh, listened to an 80 minute podcast the other day about AJ McCarron. It was uh, on YouTube. Ch- choosing not to go back to the Cincinnati Bengals so he could go to the UFL's St. Louis Battle Hawks. Did you at least double speed it? No, you can't. It was it was on youtube and i wish boomer, that was, boomer I, you can do yeah, that you can, watch, do that? You can watch youtube, yeah. YouTube oh, wow. faster okay cool can you teach me i can because I, I will like admit that speed? 80 minutes is is you a long it? time to watch you just, so you go to playback speed and you double it yeah that's that's a relief because i spent 80 minutes waiting for aj mccarron to tell me whether or not he was coming back and i had to wait two more he could have been talking like this and then you could have got there a lot faster really <laughs> and that the, they do that on the mobile too yeah yeah wow click any youtube yeah. film all right oh, hang on jeremy my two time speed is pretty strong i can do it pretty well it was pretty good thank that's you it's amazing walk, walk I, thought through that, this? I think it'd be excellent if you tried to stay Gird, in that there. punishment uh, for one show you have to do double speed oh well just, i can do it as long as you want i just need to really think about what i'm going to say so i have something to say when i'm talking thank you all do right. you think that you can do that without messing up? Because I already messed up. Yes, I know. I, I know. I noticed that you're lacking confidence, but you came in very strong. I also am enjoying, and I have to enjoy this, Mike Ryan being dismissed yeah. as Boomer by Tony. And right now he's literally showing him. He's like, what you do is, is you push okay, this button. I have but it that on. should be the response instead of getting defensive like me and your dad would get about. Like, well, that's all right. I, Mike's I, just like, I want to learn. Yeah, I want to learn. What, what do I do? The, the, the gear. I, I press the gear. It's not really cooperating okay playback speed yeah. how about that all right can you guys speed up the sound wow. of the sadness in chris cody's voice as he talks about this oh, post football that. depression that he has there is an establishment in miami staple our better hot dogs that is the only wooden that, store. that is so show, much man. better thank you tony wow i'm embarrassed but i mean i'm trying to get better and learn and not just say oh you know how that would land with other people so guys would be like ah oh, forget it just you know just one speed that's great thank you for teaching me 
It's really a game changer, Mike. You can really you can watch many videos, multiple speeds. It's just it's just it, it hits it, it hits every time. You don't have the confidence. He's at four have. speed because people listen two point speed. Now they're at four speed because he's doing two point. Mike, did I hear correctly that what you played was sound from a show earlier this week in which I believe this? I don't believe we've talked enough about how disrespectful the controversy was that Greg Cody as Ron McGill talked about the great honor that it was to be inducted into the R Betters Hall of Fame, a Miami institution that. Greg Cody couldn't stop laughing every single time it was mentioned that Ron McGill was truly flattered and honored and Greg Cody was mocking what was the honor of a lifetime. Clearly mocking it. Laughing at it each is, time. Is that a new feature? The playback thing? Because They've had it for a couple of years. They had a couple of years? Wow, I've never seen anybody talking about this. I've never picked up on... I've never eavesdropped the conversation where someone's like, yeah, two and a half times speed it. I've, I've just been out here... Like you, it could have been forty min- in the wind. It could have been forty minutes that you were listening to that AJ McCarron podcast. Yeah, I just assumed that there was no way. I, I I never even thought to look. I I would have thought that this advancement in technology, I would have known about it. Yeah. I'm sure I'm going to get dragged for it, but I'm not embarrassed. Look, guys, I'm trying to improve. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I agree with my dad. It's an odd honor. Why is it an odd honor? Honor. It's, it's just strange, man. It really is. You sounded a little like John Gruden. What I don't understand, what I don't understand about all of this, is why is there a USFL division and an XFL division, but the Houston Gamblers are the Roughnecks, which is, as you know, famously the XFL brand. That's the part you don't understand. So, if you have two divisions, do you have one? So, I mean, the season kicks off with champion versus champion. That's all cool, but you're supposed to have four and four. Supposed to have four USFL teams, four XFL teams. By the way, the tragic part in all of this is teams went away. Wow. There's actually fewer opportunities, A even tragedy. though like the spring football uh, whole deal is presenting opportunities here. But for the league to survive, you had to actually reduce the number of opportunities there are over there. So you have... A division for the USFL, a division for the XFL. However, the XFL teams outnumber the USFL teams, and you have the Houston Roughnecks in the USFL division, where I would have thought the Houston Gamblers, that is a proud tradition that they have. This is a franchise of Jim Kelly. Why would you opt for the Roughnecks over the Gamblers? Dan, your thoughts. I think Mike is overcompensating here. I think he is super sad that real football is gone, and he is just totally faking all this just to make himself oh, he's feel not better faking about this. No, I'm at Levitard Show, please put it on the poll. Uh, do you question negatively the judgment of someone who listens to an 80-minute 80, 80 podcast of A.J. McCarron going to the St. Louis Battlehawk? And we know he's going to go back to the NFL when he's done. Like, oh, he's no way well, he's going to be like, nah, I'm good. No, this could be— he, this is, this he asked for like his release from the Bengals. It was—I mean— he got emotional last year. Part of the the heartstrings being pulled last year during the XFL season is he took this pay cut because he wanted his children to see him play this position. They don't have memories of him doing it for Alabama. He's like, I got to show my kids that I can do this at a high level. It's actually really cool. And not only does he go to the Battle Hawks, but so does Brandon Silvers. And now you're talking about an embarrassment of riches for the Battle Hawks, who added Ja Pearson from I- the, the Sea Dragons. I got to be honest, Mike, I have not been in, but that A.J. McCarron story actually may have just gotten me. That's pretty cool to think that there's a guy who, who's this trying. This would be like if Manu went to Dania. Like, what are we talking about here? These are two different leagues. This is not no, even I close. I saw A.J. McCarron play at the highest level in college football, and the idea that now, all these years later, he's trying to basically resurrect moments for his kids, like for his kids to be able to see, hey, your dad can play. And, and if like, you, and if you have, watch to share that, that's really special. If you watch the Spring Boulevard interview with Matty Fresh, AJ McCarron is actually taking this job, returning to the UFL. It's not just selfish on his part. He's trying to fight for the league. He revealed that he has sent several DMs to The Rock that have gone unresponded. He left them on He revealed red. that. Yeah, and he's he revealed that Yikes. the XFL players had to sign up for the the USFL players union. They're rep by the seal workers union and they don't think it's actually such a great thing. These people have only $1000 stipends. I mean, there is something really heartwarming and something really relatable by all these athletes trying to make the decision to incur in some respects lose money over their day jobs to chase his stream. It's, and we're it's talking union efforts? You really got me. It's like Manu going to Dania. I mean, if it would be like that. It's just a, le- a much lower level league. It's, it's not like that. And I go back, I circle back around to the original sadness. You believe that there's a post- 
football. You guys haven't felt it? I'm actually like not doing a bit here. Like I woke up, like it's just been hard. You like, woke this week. up sad. Because I'm just like maybe it's because of the industry we're working, where it's just like God, we were so excited, and I, now we're like I, Vegas I, is I, done, and we're just now I, we're just thinking like, here, we're just like farting out. You know what like, the number one farting out? No, nah, I mean it's just it's. Out. I'm, I'm like sad. our show better when it doesn't have I just, football. Not, maybe it's not show related. It's just I miss football. Farting out. I miss. I didn't I, like that like, are we still gonna do Thursday Thunder? We are in a weird part of the calendar because uh, network television history was made this last week. Because the Daytona 500 got delayed a day, that allowed for a specific type of program to be the number one show on network television. This was the first time this happened in recorded history. Do you know what it was? The number one show on network television in this country last week, because of the cancellation of the Daytona 500 and it moving to the following week, was Friday Night Smackdown. Wrestling was the number one network program on television last week. So it's slow. It's real slow. (laughs) And we need the Battle Hawks to come back because it's not that slow. the ratings, not worry. The ratings were quite good. is almost here, guys. Do not fret. Spring training baseball coming at you. P's ya. and C's. It is not that slow, and I tend to like our show more when it has vastly less football in it. I don't like how much football has taken over our show, never more so, I don't think, than last year. It's too much, and it's just because it's a commonplace somehow where everybody is watching. And I don't think Chris is alone in having a sadness in his eyes about uh, foot the intensity of snorting football. It's how it is that that keeps getting bigger and bigger. The gambling is part of it. There's something about gambling on football that seems to be more enjoyable than gambling on the other sports i don't know what's happening there i really don't because i'm hitting a bet in any sports pretty fucking awesome but you were talking you at least in part are enjoying that your sundays you clear out one day to gorge on the gluttony let's get nasty that is well you're the dirtiest you're you're making an assortment of bets all over the place and hundreds of dollars are running up and down every field you guys do the thing right where it's like 8 p.m and you like smell your armpit and you're just like yeah I do, but, Good day. but with my, my oh. inner thigh. No. Oh, the inner thigh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I've been sick. there. No, no, no. Oh, so oh shut up. Oh, my oh shut up. It's like shut up, but you don't know. It. It. No, no, All right. No, I'm not. No, no, no. I'm an idiot. No. It's, the real, no. it's the real test. No. It's the real test. It's no. when you need. You're not putting your finger in your ass. Come on. Listen to me. We're not monsters. I am not. I am not. Do look. Admit you've done it. I am not. I am not judging that you said it. Or that it happens. I am judging that you said it out loud. That you admit. Guys, I'm that. trying to get better here. Yeah. This is this is a human experience. It's that seat, man. You say crazy shit. No, it's not crazy shit. It's just oh <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, no. It's I'm, I'm crazy for saying I occasionally put my finger in my inner thigh. I'll do it right now. I'll do it right now. I don't have to do it right now. I'm the only one that does it. Nobody said you were the only one who did it. Got to do it. I showered this morning, so I don't need to do it. Don't do it right now. I'll do it. Do it. Don't do it. I'll do it. Don't do it. It's a swampy region. It can't. Don't zoom. Why are you guys zooming in? They're zooming in. We don't need to see. Relax. Guys. There, no, you should, I, you should yeah. not feel shame for this. So you do it. We just shame. also shouldn't see it. No, we shouldn't see it. We shouldn't talk about it. it should Theater be of the mind. Let's move the camera a little up, it and should. my hand will just disappear. <laughs> huh? <laughs> about it. it. But it's Take better. They gotta follow you. No, but it's especially Take gross me. on a Sunday night after eight hours and all. You- <laughs> and you still got the Sunday night game too. <laughs> you shouldn't say that out loud. <laughs> you should keep that to yourself. Well, come on. Come on. What's the result? Today's episode is powered by Venmo and PayPal. Look, no matter how your favorite team did this season, there's still one way to feel like a winner, and that's with Venmo and PayPal. That's because you can choose to use Venmo or PayPal to add money to DraftKings in a few taps. You can even transfer your balance if you have one. So the next time you get paid back for dinner, drinks, or tickets to the game, you've got the option to put the money right back into your DraftKings account. Hundreds of millions of people use Venmo and PayPal already, and there's never been a better time to join them. Don't have a Venmo or PayPal account yet? Don't sweat it. Choose your way to pay and download the app to get started. Venmo and PayPal are not valid deposit withdrawal methods in Connecticut or Ontario. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Don Lebatard. If all the rain drops were lemon drops and gun drops, oh, what a rain that would be. Stugats. Standing outside with my mouth open wide. Ah, 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 ah. If all the rain drops were lemon drops and gum drops, oh, what a rain that would be. This is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugats. All right, we're here in Indianapolis, and we've got a very special guest. He is the youngest player to ever compete in the FIBA World Cup. He was 16 years old. He's now 
the old age of 17 years yeah. old as he sits down with us. His name is Kaman Malwach. He is part of the NBA Academy Africa in Senegal, and he's here part of the Basketball Without Borders program. They've got a, a, a little a game or a tournament happening here mm -hmm. at All-Star Weekend, which is a great kind of look to the future. So, come on, thank you for joining us. Thank you so much, thank you for having me. Come on, you, you just come in fresh off of a recruiting visit. Yes. You've been to Kansas and you've been to Kentucky so far? And, and Duke. And Duke. Yes. What's that experience like? Because, you know, for high school players here, it's, it's a big deal that, oh, I went on my campus visit to these great schools, great uh, basketball programs. But, you know, you're coming from the NBA Academy over in Dakar. Yes. So all of this must feel very new and very stimulating, right? Yes, it really feels new. My, actually, the, the, the last two vids, visits felt all right because I went on the first one. Mm -hmm. But it feels different, especially during the game time, and then all the fans are there, and then the crowd, and then you see the guys play. And then you imagine yourself being on that court. Yeah. It feels really different, and it's, the feeling is special. Did it make you, does it make you just want to be out there? Yes, mm -hmm. like sometimes I'd be like, what if I was just <laughs> dressed up and then warming up with the team and play? What atmosphere felt the most exciting to you? I would think all, the, all of them, yeah. the atmosphere was great. Started in Duke, in Cameroon, and then I went to Allen Field House. Mm -hmm. Great fans and Big Blue Nation. It's like, they all have great fans. Like, their fan base is really up there. Yeah. How, how, how familiar are you with the different college programs before coming over here? I didn't know much about that, but mm -hmm. I knew how college works, how they play, but I didn't know the culture in the schools because mm -hmm. I've never visited any school before. So I went and found out and checked up all those schools. You came here from NBA Academy in yes. Africa. What is a typical day there like for you? What is that schedule like? I feel like I don't think a lot of people know. Yeah. What, you know, when you hear about it and it's like, oh, that's such a cool program. But like, what's the day to day for you? It's, it's fun, it's fun and people, it's like a hard working day, especially if you're an athlete, like people have different schedules. You mm -hmm. have the time you work out alone, individual workouts. So basically me, I work out at six, so I'll be in the gym like 5.30 wow. and then I lift at seven to eight. Mm -hmm. And then we do a team practice and then everybody leaves the gym. We go get some breakfast, do school, and then hang out together. We have like a cafeteria. Mm -hmm. So we have a pool table, we have video games, we have TVs. We just hang out there and then have fun and then talk to each other, learn different cultures, different languages, because all of us are from different places yeah. of yeah. Africa. So we try to communicate and then maybe I'm trying to learn French too. There you go, man. Yeah. Awesome. But French is a little bit hard. So. I'm telling you, man, every, every additional language you learn yes. is going to come back 10 times down the road. You'll never, you'll never know like when it's like, oh, this came in handy. Yes. That is, but that is, that is wild when you think about it. It's like you come to this academy and it's the best players from all over the continent. But yes. some of them speak French, some of them speak English, some of them Portuguese, Portuguese if they're yes. coming from Angola or, yes. or you know. Mozambique or one of those places. So how do you guys communicate like that at first before anyone really knows the kind of common words? Yeah. It's, I don't know how to feel. It's, it's a different like way of communicating. We might not speak the same language, mm -hmm. but when somebody says something, you get it. <laughs> Though he says it in his language, yeah. that's just a way you understand what he's trying to say. And then you'll be like, oh, this and this, and then, then they'll start learning English and then we we'll start learning that language too. You're the youngest player to ever play in the FIBA World Cup. Yes. And you, uh, South Sudan, obviously went far for a program that is fairly new. Yes. And also not very well funded when you compare to like to, the big powerhouse yeah. country. Yes. First of all, did you understand like how big of a deal it was, not only for you to be playing, but for, for the team to be playing that well? Yeah. I d like... When I, I looked at it more, I saw the bigger picture when I went back home and then I saw what it did for the whole country. Right. Everybody was waiting for us at the airport. Everyone was happy. Everyone mm -hmm. was excited. It's like we have something, a sport in the country we support. So it's like that's when I saw the bigger picture of it and the Olympics is a big deal. In Uganda, yes. you were playing soccer yes. before you played basketball. Can you tell people how you got into basketball, how you made that switch? 
normally in Africa, everybody plays soccer. Mm -hmm. Everyone who is in Africa who, start, who plays basketball, they played soccer before that. But I started playing basketball when I went to watch a camp and then saw tall guys. It's my first time seeing tall people, guys who are taller than me, right. I barely find them. And then I was excited and I was like, I belong there and that's, that's where I should start. And then the next time, I just came on the court and started dribbling the ball and laying up. Now, the fun part about playing for South Sudan is that many of the players come from all across, basically you know, just scattered people, right? Yes. How cool was it to like meet other guys, like, different backgrounds, but kind of yes. you all have a shared uh, heritage? It was, we, we really had to bring it up together and like be on the same page at first because we have guys who don't speak the language, maybe mm -hmm. guys from Australia who didn't grow up where we're from. Right. So we had to teach them how our culture is. Wow. So that's why we spent like a month in, a, in the camp and then the camp pretty really brought us together pretty good. Where did you guys do the camp? We did a camp in Australia uh -huh. and then we went from Australia to China and then China to Philippines. Right. That's so much travel. Did you have a favorite place that you visited? I'm not among those ones, but I have a favorite place I visited. That's in Rwanda and South Africa, in, back in Africa. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So you guys, obviously after the World Cup, you went back and you saw the reaction. What was that like for you? It was a good experience. The first time, I mean, nobody knew me because right. I was not on the team. But the second time, it was it's more evident. exciting. Yeah, <laughs> and then my family was happy. My mother, all my siblings were at the airport waiting for me. It's like the first person in the family to play on the national team. That's amazing. What, yes. what does your family think about you coming over here and going on this incredible journey across yeah. the Midwest, looking at all these schools? Most of the guys in my family don't know much about basketball, but they don't know how big it is to visit those schools like yeah. Kansas, Duke and all that stuff. So every time I try to explain to them, I'd be like, if you're in the basketball world, you will know what these schools are, but because you're not there. The other thing is that they're also very good schools yes. academically. Yes. So oh, yeah. what are you looking for in as you're trying to make this decision? Yes. What are the things that are important to you? But first of all, the basketball part is the development, how I'm going to develop, mm -hmm. how they're going to push me to develop in that play I want to be, and then how they'll help me go to the next step. And I want to go somewhere where I will, I will win too, because I want to play in the NCAA tournament. Mm -hmm win a championship and then be able to move to my next step and I have a championship. And I want to study school too, because when they offer you a scholarship, you can come back years later and finish your school. Yeah. And that's what I will do too. From a basketball standpoint, how do you want to develop? Like who are players that you've looked up to or you know, were there guys that you would watch on YouTube when you were figuring all the basketball stuff out? Oh, when, when, I, when I started playing basketball, is I saw videos of Giannis, that was like 2019. Giannis was in his prime, back-to-back yeah. mm -hmm. -back MVP, defensive player. Mm -hmm. So I saw highlights of him and I was so excited. I'm like, I want to be this guy. I want to <laughs> play like him. I watch a lot of big guys in the NBA. I watch other guys who play four, between four and three. I watch Joel, I watch Giannis, KD. But to me, I will think I'll turn into a player like Anthony Davis. He has my style of player and MB too. You've only been playing basketball for four years, yes. right? But your development is very apparent. Yes. What do you attribute that to? Why, why have you been able to develop so quickly? Uh, first of all is, is the work we do at the academy, mm -hmm. is how they push us, how they develop us into pros, because all we do at the academy is what the NBA players do. We shoot from the NBA line, we use NBA coaches and everything. So. They developed me that way and then I put in the work too. I stayed consistent with the work. I work every day. I make sure I work on my game, whether it's a Sunday or Saturday, do something, work on my craft. Because I started basketball late, so I, I always worked more so that I can catch up with the guys who started before me. Mm -hmm. Are there any um, specific superstitions you've developed? Like before a game, is there anything you have routine. to do? Yeah. yeah. No, I have routines like same routine, Maybe the way I stretch, the way I shoot, mm. form shooting and everything, and then I have a routine like before before I check in in the game, before the game starts, so I'll be on the starting lineup and then I'll touch all my teammates' hands and it always gives me good luck. <laughs> when did you realize, oh, I'm actually good at this? Um, I didn't discover my full potential until I went to the academy, mm -hmm. because before I was, I was just playing basketball, it's like, 
no more pick up yeah. until I went to the academy that's when I realized I can be a good player right yeah I can be great I can I can play basketball and I can change people's life I can impact people's life using this and as soon as I went to the academy and then I decided to put in the work because I knew who I can become what's been the hardest part of of your journey uh, the hardest part to start back where I was the lack like we lacked facilities mm -hmm. I'd walk a couple of like miles to go where I play basketball but yeah that uh, the hardest part actually is staying after that is staying consistent with what you're doing because with all that walking and getting tired and then all those miles you walk you're going to play somewhere else in a different city it would be frustrating but staying consistent with it was very hard kind of challenged me before and then suddenly i just just kept on doing it every day and to help me get an opportunity to come to the academy and then i got recruited and then that's how I knew everything could go well from there because where we stay, obviously, the facility is like you walk like two minutes, three minutes, and you're already there. Right. Yes. So yeah. I, had, I had no reason, I had no reason, no excuse. So I had to work out every day. Were the courts crowded when you would get there? Yeah. Back in Uganda, the court yeah. was pretty crowded. I would probably go at three, two, because by five, the older guys would come and then they would pick up teams for yeah. pickup, and then they won't pick you, obviously, because you're young, and they'll, they'll pick somebody stronger than you. Right. And then you play in the World Cup, and you're like, haha, I should have picked yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you could compete in any of the Saturday night things, so either dunk contest, three-point shootout, or skills competition, yes. which one would you want to compete in? I'll go with the skills one, or the three-point contest. Yeah. Those ones are better. Yeah, I'll, go. I'll probably go with the skills one. I can win that, too. Yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Could you beat Steph? In shooting? Yeah, in the three-point contest. I don't know. I guess we have to find out. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. That was a good answer. Yes. Best of luck to you. Thank you so much. Journey and, and hopefully we'll see you again. Thank you. But as an all-star. All right, for sure. I was going to say, you, when you're an all-star and yes. you're too big and famous for us, you still got to come back because this was the first one we did. All right, I will. Okay. <laughs> All right. Dan Lebatard. Sports. Stugats. More sports. This is the Dan Lebatard Show with the Stugats. I want to talk about whether we have enemies. Mm. We know you do. Because I have been developing a list. I can't wait to hear it. I'm, I'm not somebody who naturally has. I, you know, that my is a big zig where I thought you would zag. Right. You having a list of enemies feels so pure in some way. I, you know, my niece, uh, who is nine years old, uh, said something. We were at dinner, and she was like, "I've never heard you yell at anybody." I've never heard you yell at anybody either. It would make me wildly uncomfortable to hear you yell. And it it. Uh, I did not know that this was a thing about me that was so uh, obvious to others. Mm. Um, it was not obvious to me, but of course it's true. I don't remember the last time I really yelled at anyone. Mm. Um, and so trying to generate hatred <laughs> in list form um, was inspired by this. I have a rivals list. Everyone in the media that is within two years of me or younger than me, I must vanquish and I must be more successful than. I have to do it. They are all my rivals. And the reason I mention it is right now, rising to the top of the rivals list is Pablo Torre, and he will be vanquished. The top Pablo's younger than me. Pablo made fun of me a bit on the show the other day, which only solidified that he is my rival. And it doesn't matter that we're friendly. It doesn't matter that he's always been kind to me. It doesn't matter that I was at a Christmas party with him. I will vanquish Pablo Torre. And then Nick Wright, host on FS1, um, opened his show with Kevin Wilds. Uh, like on air this. talent now, which we all know him as a producer, but on air talent. Correct. Live from New York. Spilled some coffee. So, of yours or mine? Mine. Sorry about that. The show that's going to vanquish Pablo Torres. Oh, come on. Don't put that on the air. Why? Well, I'm serious about it. Okay, all right. If you want to do it, we're going to do it together. All right. That's y'all. That's y'all. So I'm left here wondering like what to do with all of this. And mm -hmm. so I have a list of enemies. Mm -hmm. um, I put into my notepad <laughs> app. Uh, and so number one is Vivek Ramaswamy, who if you listen to PTFO. I mean, hell yes. I mean obviously. Awesome, awesome course, enemy. Good enemy to have. Yeah. The guy fucking sucks and is <laughs> deserving of, uh, of yelling at. Uh, uh, number two is uh, currently Nick Wright. He, I'm like, he, he, he asked for it. 
Yeah, you gotta. Otherwise, you look soft. Mm-hmm. So, th- so advise me. He's a ri- he called you a rival, not an enemy. Um, I think that's a compliment. You think of me. That's very sweet. It's you the could, yeah yeah. You could always do the like. Oh, I don't think of the the, the Don Don thing. Yeah, like I don't think of you at all. But but. Or put him on your rivals list. Whatever motivates you, because all that is is fuel for you. I think it. De- I think it does depend on what motivates you. What motivates me with my enemies? I have enemies. I'm not going to name them because, to me, the most powerful thing I can do mm. is not name them, not let them know I ever think about them, mm. and then succeed. Yeah. So it's me trying mm. to succeed as a form of, well, try me now, or getting to a place where I have enough power in this industry in myself <laughs> to not be pushed around by people in the past yeah. who were able I to push that. me around. So I that's that. that's sort of my MO. So I don't even know if I would have acknowledged the Nick Wright. Mm. Can Except you? that you have to because it's content. You have to. Yeah, it's so, you, so, you need, so you need to yeah. walk this line where like it could you it could be a joke to you. What's your relationship with Nick Wright? You're friendly. So we went to this Christmas party, mm. Kevin Wilde's family Christmas party. Mm. I have my invite Lost in the mail. Oh, don't know I guess. Kevin Wilds, but my last name is Wilder, so it feels like I should have been grandfather. Maybe that's he sees you right. as a rival because oh, if yeah. he's wild, you're wilder. Maybe just one keystroke away. Yeah, two. This- he's just a typo of you. Right. Oh wait, Wilds. Sorry, math. <laughs> <laughs> I I liked Nick. I liked Nick. Oh, oh shit. No, you you can still like him. So once upon a time, I was like, I would have I would have reacted more like. Uh, I'm kind of insulted mm-hmm. that I'm Nick Wright's rival. Like, what the f- <laughs> and now I'm like, Nick's killing it. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Like he's doing, he's, but now I'm complimenting him. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, am I supposed to do that? Yes, you are. I think he was just sort of doing that. That was absolutely mm. a compliment. He's saying your name. He didn't, it wasn't like a Stephen A. Smith video. Like the, the <laughs> with the, the very carefully tracky, placed. Which let me just say, Dan and I like made food and like sat down and like you know did the drugs that we do just and watched that and what a high mm. point of my recent literally. But anyway, no one has line read the word bastard exactly better than Stephen A. But but so that's not what he was doing. He said my 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 rivals or anybody within two to, years of but, me. But you gotta, how old is he? Uh, I so I'm thirty eight. Turning so 39 September. He is older than me. I think he's Nick 40. I think. Right oh, age. my guess. 39? Sorry. I'm so sorry. Ooh. But you still have time to invite what, what me to your month? 40th what birthday month? party. What October 3rd, 1984. He's a year older than me. Yeah. Um, and I'm a Libra. He's September. a Libra. Yeah. Mm. Ooh. Mm. Mm. That's why you're rivals. Mm. It all comes back to astrology. I, uh, I I feel like for content reasons, um, and I should not even say this for content reasons, um, I'm going to play this up. Yeah. <laughs> Great. That's fine. I think it'd be fine. Your think face, for, you the, can, for the um, audio listeners, I wish they could have seen the shrug and sort of resigned <laughs> smile Pablo just gave because that was beautiful. I'm it, an enemies guy now. Is it kayfabe? It could just give, them, give the people he what they want. He did say he wanted to vanquish me. Yeah. What does that mean? Take up arms. Take away your show. He wants to. Uh, How wield do you a vanquish sword? someone with content? Yeah, he wants to fucking cut Out my head off with a samurai content. sword. I have an enemy currently, actually. Who's yeah, that? Charlotte mentioned an enemy that she refused mm-hmm. to say, and I would like her to say it, and we'll bleep the name out. But I would like to react to who this enemy is. Oh well, it's the Kate agent who wouldn't let me bring my fanny pack on as a third personal item, which is absolute garbage because it's attached to me. How does that take up space in the back? It's only taking <laughs> up my own space. Shirt. What was it doing on the outside of your shirt? Put it under your shirt. She spotted me before it was. This was a few months ago. Now I have enough coats that it just smart. I could just you yeah. Know, it's just like a tire around my weight, but. <laughs> You know, she at the time it was warmer, and I didn't have my coat on yet. And she'd spotted me before mm. I had it, to, and then, mm. but it couldn't fit in my bag, guys. It was stressful. Um, so that's that's an enemy. That's a good enemy to have. I also actually, you know what? At one point, I did have a public enemy, which was Ed Werder, because I tweeted there was a job opening at Sports Illustrated. I, think I remember this, which is I something don't. I would love to be able to say now. Mm. Thank you. Speaking of enemies, sure. Uh, thank you to ABG. Yeah. Um. Authentic Brands Group. Gang. I can't believe that's their name. It's so funny every time. It is the yeah. funniest authentic possible authentic name. Authentic Brands the, Group. Or, the, and they're just a corporate inauthentic brand shoe group. stomping out authentic. 
So anyway, so and and there's a job opening, and I I tweeted it, and I think I said something like, if you are a woman or a person of color, especially, reach out to me about this job opening. And Ed Werder quote tweets it, and he was like, oh what, like men aren't like white guys can't be good too, like. And then we got into a whole back and forth. I don't think I would now. I think I'd just be like, Ed, knock yourself out, buddy. But I was like, the indignant at the time. I needed to cape for journalism and for for those who don't have a chance. And then and like also in the process, like get a bunch more Twitter followers and yeah, look yeah, and yeah, yeah. by yeah. the end of it, it he was getting C word he was getting so dunked on that Capitalism I just felt was what I meant what are we what does it mean at this point oh is it I thought we were Con- saying content? content. Oh no, I meant capitalism. Unfettered content. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's they're going to bleep all of these. It's going to sound C-words. like we're just saying the actual C right. words. Anyway, by the end of it, and everyone was like, "Charlotte, you're amazing." Ed Werder, you suck. I felt so gross by the end of it. I was like, "I hate this." Even being like the main character in a good way on the internet is gross. It's so disgusting. you vanquished Ed Werder and well, didn't love how it felt. Yeah, I didn't, and I have no ill will towards Ed Werder, but it did give me one of the greatest gifts of my life, which was the headline, "Ed Wer- on TMZ." This was on TMZ, wow. a headline, Ed Werder accuses SI writer of sexism, dot, 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 against men. <laughs> wow. I mean, that what is a picture the, of me and Ed Werder, dot, 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 now. now. <laughs> a wow. picture of me and Ed Werder next to each other. Beautiful. Oh, I remember man. that battle. It was a good beef. Yeah, so shout out to Ed. He's not an enemy. I have roles I could identify. I'm not going to tell you who the people are, but like I've got a, a, a one enemy, enemy light. Not rival, just a person I don't think well of. And if given the chance to bring negative or positive outcomes into their life, I will choose negative. That's mm. this list of people. Is like if given the chance, it's a long. I'm not notes picking the. I'm not taking the road less track. I'm. I'm going to give them the short end of the stick. One of them is a guy who runs a charity that I donated a lot of money to when I did not have any money. That then when I um. It, got on baseball he was like who he tweeted a picture of us in the booth and said who even are any of these people <laughs> that guy oh uh, uh then there deserved. was then there's a, a a man who i feel is mostly responsible for uh the outcome of one of my shows no longer being a show um <laughs> he knows who he is and it's we're not then there's actually another one and of those at the second <laughs> stop and he just got a promotion so good for him um but again if he if his path crosses mine mm. it'll be a demotion um and then there's an x there's everybody's got one x that it's like i i um no idea where this person is at this point or like what their life is about i don't keep any tabs on them i hope it's going poorly mm-hmm. yeah. um that guy sounds like a c word yeah an unfettered C word. <laughs> unfettered C word. Um, can you guys help me workshop how to vanquish Nick Wright, though? Like a burn, like a good roast? Yeah, I mean, say something like Nick Wright, more than like Nick wrong. Yeah, that's bad. So don't do that. Yeah. But you could talk yeah, about how his, pile. his wife dresses him. He can't dress himself. Oh, um, a compliment and an insult. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. What about That's something good, like that was that was Katie was like ready. I with love that. his wife. I'm like a big. Fan I know of she's wife. great. Don't let her be. She had the Christmas party. Her. No, she had the Christmas party. Yeah. She was great. Yeah. You know, That's I know how you should. Right. I know how you can vanquish Nick. Right. Have him on your show. Actually, that's that feels like um he feels like Nick Wright is and I love Nick Wright. I will say I put Nick Wright on my show before multiple people were putting them on their show. So I oh, yeah. don't think Nick Wright and I are rivals. I, but yeah. I will for I'm the only, record I'm I only also, prefacing okay. that because of okay. what I'm about okay. to say. You're supposed to be my I'm only sorry. prefacing it because He's of the mean thing I'm about now. to say, which is that Nick Wright does give the energy of come on my show and debate me then. He's the guy that's like will he will He's strong at doing that. Yes. Which is he why he can back you, you into a mental have corner. Him onto your show. Yeah. I still worry you about so? you. I wouldn't want you to take an L, an unnecessary well, I just L. think invite him How on for like a night. Nice time. Katie Nolan might be number three on my enemies list. Marcus <laughs> Jordan and Larsa Pippen were going to be oh. number three. Mm-hmm. Katie Nolan doubting whether I could defeat Nick Wright, that <laughs> ass bitch, <laughs> in a debate. A PAB? He called him a PAB. An unfettered. unfettered. <laughs> oh my God. PAB. A Listen, PAB. You ha- now you have to do it. You don't go into every fight thinking you can lose it. Is that just me? <laughs> I just, every oh, yeah. time there's a possible fight, I'm like, how am I going to fall it's flat like superstars on my face in the dunk here. contest. Yeah, dude. Um, I appreciate how much you worry about me. Yeah. Um, I'm like, and, go and, for it, man. Yeah, dude, content. <laughs> it's going to come out awesome. Seriously, uh, everybody would watch that, though. I like that Katie Nolan is the gate agent uh, at the... At you the, can't bring that on. You have to my many ego. You cannot, yeah. at, you cannot. And I'm like, do You've got enough, it. sir. That is, <laughs> You've got enough. Too much dip on your fanny pack, sir. <laughs> the C.
sizzle of McDonald's sausage. It's enough to make you crave your favorite breakfasts. Enough to head over to McDonald's. Enough to make you really wish this commercial were scratch and sniff. And if you're a sausage person, now get two satisfyingly savory sausage McGriddles, sausage biscuits, or sausage burritos for just $3.33. Or mix and match. Price and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer or combo meal. Single item at regular price. Ba-da-ba-ba-ba.